We're back with more Pokemon name etymology videos. This is 8-Bit Otter. And this is Donata. Today we'll be tackling the Pokemon of the Johto region. Out of all the regions, Johto seems to be the most influenced by Japanese culture. So let's see if that richness is reflected in the names of this generation, starting off with Chikorita. This name comes from Chikori, a type of vegetable that's related to lettuce. Although it looks more like a green potato to me. The second part, Ita, is a Spanish diminutive suffix that often refers to something small or young. We've seen this before with Ponita in Generation 1. Beirif comes from Beirif. Meganium combines mega, which is the Greek word for big, and geranium, a piece of flower. Hinoarashi comes from Hinoko, spark, and Yamaarashi, porcupine. Yamaarashi can also refer to a mountain storm. And Hino Arashi also means firestorm. Magum Arashi follows the pattern but this time combines Yama Arashi with Maguma. These two words combine to make Magumarashi. Interestingly, Magumarashi resembles a badger which in Japanese is called Anaguma, which literally means whole bear. Although the guma part of Magurashi comes from Maguma, it could also carry a double meaning. It can do other things, why shouldn't it? The final evolution of this family of porcupine badger bears is Bakufun. This name is made up of Bakufu, shockwave, bomb blast, or Bakuhatsu, which in English would translate to an explosion, as well as Typhoon, which in Japanese is Typhoon. This also ties into its English name, Typhlosion, which is made up of Typhoon and Explosion. Fun fact, the name Bakufun always reminds me of the German word Backofen, baking oven, which is also fitting for Typhlosion. That's funny. Bakufen would be the perfect nickname for this Pokemon. Next up we have one of my absolute favorite Pokemon of all time, Waninoko. Waninoko literally means baby crocodile and its evolution's name, Arigeitsu, is a shortening of alligator. Finally, Odairu means big crocodile, which he most certainly is. Otachi's name comes from O, tail, and Itachi, which means weasel, or Tachi, which means to stand. This is very appropriate because it's a weasel that stands on its tail. For all you Naruto fans out there, you most definitely recognize the word Itachi. The same kanji is used in Uchiha Itachi. Otachi's name is the same as its pre-evolved form, this time with O meaning big in front of it like we've seen with Odairu. Hoho sounds very similar to another flying Pokemon that we'll get to a little later on, but this name is actually from the sound an owl makes. Yoru no Zuku is a combo of Yoru, Nighttime, and Mimizuku, Horned Owl, or Nozoku, to peek, which Yoru no Zuku is great at. So much so, it can even peek into the future with its move Future Sight. It must be very difficult to plan a surprise party for Yoru no Zuku, with it being able to see into the future and all. Ladyba is a shortening of Ladybug or Ladybird, and possibly Red. Ladyan also comes from Ladybug or Ladybird, combined with Red, as well as Alien, referencing its alien-like design. Itomaru is from Thread, Ito, and Circle, Maru. The Maru suffix of its name is commonly used in ninja names, as seen in Kagemaru, Rikimaru, Tatsumaru, Orochimaru, Konohamaru, and so on. This is interesting because in Gen 2, both ninja characters, Koga and his daughter Janice, had an Itomaru at some point because both use our next Pokemon. Ariadosu most likely comes from Ariadne of Greek mythology, who gave Theseus string to help guide him through the labyrinth. It may also come from Arachnido, Arachnid, and Odos to threaten. Kurobato is cross and bat, 
And ever since I learned this Japanese name, I've started to always nickname my Pokemon from the Zubat line Kuro, because I like this name. I like that name too. And since Kuro can also mean dark in Japanese, this is the perfect nickname for this denizen of darkness. Chonchi's name is from Chochin, Lantern or Lampion, or from Chochin Anko, Football Fish. I always confuse the Japanese and the English name because they changed up the syllables in a different way. Chincho and Chonchi are pretty similar. It's confusing hearing them back to back. Fear not, because our next Pokemon's names are much easier to remember in both languages. Because Rantan is nearly identical to its English name. The name, of course, comes from the English word lantern. That shouldn't be too difficult to remember. Next up, we have Pichu, whose name is a shortening of Pikachu. This name could also be related to Pucci, from French Petit, which means small. Next up, we have another baby Pokemon, Pete. This name comes from Pixie, which was used as the basis for its fall form name, Pikuchi. Pupurin is from Purin, the word for pudding, which is Jigglypuff's Japanese name, or Pucci, French word Petit, and Purin Purin. An onomatopoeia for wobbling or puri puri, an onomatopoeia for inner half. Togepi's name is made up of toge, which means spikes, referring to its pointy head. The second part, pio pio, is an onomatopoeia for chirping. Togechiku follows a similar naming scheme as its pre evolved form. It's a combination of spike and chick. The totem pole inspired Pokemon. Natu, or as it's known in Japanese, Neiti, comes from native. And its evolved form, Neitio, comes from native Indo, referring to the fact that it's based off a Native American sculpture. The electric sheep Pokemon, Meripu, combines Me, the sound sheep make, with Mary, referring to the old nursery rhyme, Mary had a little lamb as well as sheep. And if you rearrange the letters of Marip, you get Ampere. Mokoko comes from Moko Moko, which means fluffy. Despite the fact that this family gets less and less fluffy as it evolves. Denru literally means electric dragon, but also means electrical current. Although in the generation it first appeared in, Denryu was a pure electric type, in Generation 6, it received a Mega Evolution and gained the Dragon type, making its name perfectly reflect its typing. Kirehana literally means pretty flower. This name is a great contrast to its pre evolved form, Kusaihana. Funny story right now, my cell phone ringtone is a random guy saying Kusaihana in a funny voice, which I found on the internet. <laughs> Let me show you. That is brilliant. Oh my god. Mariru is made up of Marui, round, and Rudi, lapis lazuli. <laughs> god, I can never say that word. Lapis lazuli, referring to either the stone or the color. The ending could also refer to real. Mariruri is comprised of the same words as Mariru, just with a bonus ri at the end. Next up, we have the tree Pokemon, Usoki. Actually, it's not a tree at all, and its name confirms this deception. Usoki is a combination of Uso, Lai, and Ki, tree, making its name mean imposter tree. It also sounds similar to Usotski, which means liar. This is one of my favorite names. Mine too. It's really fun just delving into all the layers of this name. Oh, and going even further, Usoki shares similarities to another Nintendo character, Wudo, from Earthbound Beginnings slash Mother for the Famicom. Usoki's English name is Sudo Wudo, seemingly confirms this connection. It's most likely a coincidence, but it's fun to think this was the specific tree that Usoki is trying to mimic. Nyoro Tono comes from Nyoro Nyoro, which is an onomatopoeia for slithering. 
Tono sama gaeru, a spotted frog, and Tono, meaning lord. Which is fitting because this Pokemon can only evolve when holding the Kingstone. Haneko comes from ha, leaf, hane, wing, haneru, to jump, and ko, which means child, or neko, which means root. The neko part also sounds like neko, cat, which seems fitting because of its cat like features. Haneko's evolved form, Popoko, comes from Tampopo, dandelion, and the same co suffix we saw earlier, which could either be child, root, or cat. Watako follows the same pattern, but this time with wata, meaning cotton. Eipamu is one of the most straightforward names on the list so far. It's just ape and palm. That's all. Himanatsu combines himawari, sunflower, with Natsu, nut, or natsu, which means summer. Hima also means free time, which this Pokemon looks like it spends its free time soaking up sunlight. And when it soaks up enough sunlight, specifically in the form of a sunstone, mm -hmm. it becomes Himawari. This name is made up of ki, which means yellow, kichi, which means good fortune, kiki, meaning happiness, and like its pre-evolved form, the word for sunflower, Himawari. Next, we have the dragonfly Pokemon Yan Yanma from Yanma, which is dragonfly in Japanese. Moving on to the super cute Upa, this name is from Upa Rupa, which means axolotl. Its evolved form Nuo comes from Numa, swamp, and O, king, or O San Shou, a Japanese giant salamander. Eifi, Eevee's psychic evolved form, has its name derived from Espa, Esper, and Feel. Its evolutionary counterpart's name, Buraki, derives from Black and Lucky. I love how these two Pokemon both have Feel and Lucky in their names. Maybe Feelin and Lucky would be fitting nicknames for these two. They just have one question for you all. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you punk? Yami Karasu is from Yami, dark, and Karasu, crow, which means dark crow. Its name also sounds similar to the mystical three-legged crow, Yadagarasu, who fans of Yu-Gi-Oh! and Miles Edgeworth most definitely remember. Yadokingu follows its evolution line's name scheme, but this time combining Yadokari, the Japanese word for hermit or tenant, with king. The one and only ghost Pokemon in this region, Muma, has its name come from Muma, a nightmare, but also refers to a succubus. Unknown, the Pokemon that took the English alphabet to the next level, has its name derived from unknown. You mean we don't know where this name comes from? No, it's from unknown. Well, that's too bad. Maybe one day we'll know. No, we do know. It's unknown. Well, how could you know where the name comes from if it's unknown? That's a good point. Wobuffet is named Sonansu from Sonansu, which is colloquial Japanese for Sonandes, meaning that's how it is. This name will be extra funny when we get to its pre evolved form when we cover Gen 3. Kirin Riki is Kirin Giraffe turned into a palindrome. This choice of name perfectly reflects its second head on its tail. This name makes even more sense when you see what its beta sprite looked like. Originally it was designed where both heads were equal in size. The localization team did great by making its English name a palindrome with the name Girafarig. Fun fact, as of Generation 9, Girafarig is one of five Pokemon whose name is a palindrome. The other Pokemon are Eevee, Ho-Oh, Alamola, and Girafarig's evolved form, Feridgiraffe. Including Kirindiki, there are a total of four Pokemon whose Japanese names are palindromes. The other Pokemon are Popo, Pidgey, Pippi, Clefairy, and Uu, Cramorant. There would have been the same number of palindrome Pokemon in both languages, but Farigaraf's Japanese name, Bikikirin, is not a palindrome. It's close, but no cigar. Next up, we have Kunugi Dama, which is Kunugi, Pinecone, and Tama, 
pine sphere. So I guess it's not a pine cone, but a pine sphere. Foritos has a lot going on here. It's a blend of forest, fortress, toss, and turret. They jam pack this name. It's, it's full to the top. No kochi is from the Japanese Tsuchinoko, a snake-like yokai from Japanese folklore. Tsuchinoko literally translates to child of a hammer. This thing's so freaky, if you ever see it, you might want to smash it with a hammer. <laughs> but how can a hammer have a child? That does not make any sense. Legends tell the tale that this yokai is a snake-like creature with a round belly that can speak. But it's known for lying and also enjoys alcohol. So it's a lying alcohol. Okay, well, don't trust the word it says then. Guraiga combines glider and gargoyle. You think it should have been rock flying type if it was based off of a stone gargoyle? That feels more appropriate. Wonder why they went with a ground type instead. Maybe they didn't want it to steal Aerodactyl's thunder. Although, I don't think Aerodactyl would mind seeing how it's weak to thunder. Next up, we have the evolved form of Iwaku, Haganeiru. This name comes from Hagane, steel, and most likely nail. Buru comes from bulldog and maybe blue. Fun fact, this name is exactly the same as the Japanese name of the game and manga female character Green, because in Japanese she's called blue. Or Buru. I think she should have had a Buru on her team. It just fits her vibe. The evolved form of Buru, the Pokemon, not the trainer, of course, Guran Buru, has its name derived from Grand and Bulldog. And also maybe Grumble and Bully. Harisen is a shortening of Harisenbon which means porcupine fish. Harisenbon literally means a source of a thousand needles, but it looks like Harisen has like 15 or so. Hasamu, the evolved form of Storaiku, has its name derived from Hasamu, which means to snip. It can also work as a reference to Hasami, which means scissors. You would think that a scissor Pokemon would be extra vulnerable to a rock, like its pre-evolved form. But surprisingly, it's safe against rock-type Pokémon. And, since it's a steel-type, it's actually strong against them. Next up, we have another bug, Subo Subo, which has its name come from the word Subo, which means jar. And in addition to that, Fuji Subo means acorn barnacle. Hope you like bugs, because we got a third one for you. Herakuros has its name come from Herakures Okabuto and Cross. The next Pokemon wordplay is a little sneaky. There were a lot of possibilities for the etymology of Nyura, but the ones that feel the most accurate are Senyu, which means sneaking around, sneaking around gets you nowhere. and Surara, which means an icicle. The U might also come from the sound reading U of Itachi, which means weasel. Himeguma comes from Hime, which means small in this context, and Kuma, meaning bear. He also means crescent moon, so it also works for that, since Himeguma and its evolved form seem to be referencing the constellations of Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. Speaking of Ursa Major, we got some major Ursa up in here with Ursa Ring, whose Japanese name is Ringuma. Ringu means ring, and Guma comes from Kuma, which means bear. The word Rin in Japanese, oddly enough, means ring or circle, so it works with that too. Hey, this is funny. The next Pokemon up happens to have Guma in its name as well. But it's not connected to Hime Guma or Rin Guma at all, nor is it a bear. It's just a funny coincidence. It's not a bear, but it does look like a melted red gummy bear. Magmag is made up of magma and namekuji, which means slug. If you are a fan of Dragon Ball, the word Namekuji might sound familiar to you, because it's the word that inspired the name for Piccolo's homeworld, Planet Namek, or Namekuse. Since Nameku comes from the Japanese word for slug, Namekuji, that explains why all the residents of Planet Namek are named after slugs and snails. Speaking of snails, the next Pokemon up should be very easy, because it's the same in English. Magukago? is magma and escargo put together. The cargo is also fitting considering it's carrying cargo in the form of its shell. Urimu is uribo, which means piglet, and boo-boo, 
which is the sound of a pig oinking, combine. Urimu is very cute and fun to say. Inomu comes from inoshishi, which means wild boar, and boo boo, which is the sound of a pig oinking, combined. The same boo boo we saw in Urimu. I should also mention this because it's interesting that the mu sound might actually come from the Thai word mu, which means pig. It's probably just a coincidence, but I thought I'd mention it for fun. Our next Pokemon, Sanigo, has its name come from Sani and Sango, which means coral. Tepo is from Tepo, which is a type of fish. And it also comes from tepo, which means gun. And if you look at the better artwork, the name is even more fitting. And its evolved form Okutan is octopus and tank combined together, which is definitely apparent if you look at this Pokemon's beta concept art. Next up is the Santa Penguin, Deribado. Deribado is a combination of delivery and bird. Because the V sound is typically replaced with a B in Japanese, Deribado is spelled the same as delivered in Japanese. So that means we all could very well have been saying this Pokemon's name wrong all these years. Instead of Delibird, it should have been Delibird. Mantine may have its name come from Manta and Brine. Eyamudo is air and armed put together. Derubiru seems to come from Devil and possibly Deru to come out. Hiruga comes from hell and possibly the hound of Ragnarok, Gomar. King Gudora is a fusion of king and dragon. Gomazo is made up of Komakai, tiny, and Zo, which means elephant. So all together it means tiny elephant. Very cute. Donfan is Don and elephant smushed together. Porygon 2, the sequel to Porygon 1, has its name come from Porygon and 2. Pretty straightforward. Odoshishi is made up of Odoshi, which means to threaten, and Shika, which means deer. There's also an interesting cultural reference with this name. It comes from the Shishi Odoshi, deer scare a bamboo shoot that fills up with water and hits a rock. It's used to scare deer and other wild critters away and prevent them from eating garden plants. Doburu is a combo of dog and doodle. Baruki comes from the English word bulky. Capoeira is named after the Brazilian martial arts capoeira. This Pokemon always reminded me of Eddie Gordo from Tekken, who is also a capoeira fighter. Muchuru, the pre-evolution of Jinx, has its name come from Muchu, mesmerize, and Chu, the sound of a kiss. The Ru at the end connects this to its evolved form, Rujura, and that comes from the word Rouge. Erikido is a combination of electric and kid, and our next name is the name I'm going to ask you all to be very mature about. Magami's Japanese name is Booby. Booby is a combination of booby, referring to the blue foot booby bird, of course, and baby. I mentioned this way back when covering Magmar. I told you it was a funny name. Miru Tanku is the same as in English, and it comes from milk and tank. That's a little strange that they put a milking cow Pokemon right after a Pokemon called booby. We're on to you, game freak. Happy Nasu comes from happy or happiness and nurse. All three legendary beasts of Johto share the same name pattern. Raiko means Thunder Emperor. Fans of One Piece most likely will remember the Japanese word for emperor because it's the same ko in Yonko. And the Rai is used constantly throughout Japanese media, like Raiden, Raigeki, just to name a couple. Ente comes from En, flames, and Te which means sovereign. So he's the flame sovereign. Finally, we have Suikun, which comes from Sui, water, and Kun, monarch. So water monarch. Suisho also means crystal. That is appropriate considering this Pokemon is the mascot of crystal version. So all three names can literally be translated to Thunder Emperor, Flame Sovereign, and Water Monarch. These would have been pretty cool names, even though they sound more like names for Paradox Pokemon. Unfortunately, these names don't meet the 10 character limit, so it wouldn't have been possible either way. Oh well. Yogirasu is made up of the word for infant, yoji, 
and sorasu, the suffix that is used for dinosaurs. The yo could also come from yosei, which means larva. That connects well with its English name. Sanagirasu comes from sanagi, which means chrysalis or pupa, and sorasu. And the final Pokemon of this evolution line is bangirasu, and it comes from yaban, which means savage. And of course, the saurus we saw us before us. We have reached the Gen 2 mascots. That means we're almost home. Lugia, the mascot of silver version, has its name come from Arguros, the ancient Greek word for silver. It's also possible that Lugia's name is a reference to Ludia, which is the alternate name of Bahamut. But seeing how this Pokemon only shares the vaguest of similarities to Bahamut, I'm not fully convinced. It's just as likely to be a reference to Beluga or Deluge. I just figured we'd mention it because it's pretty interesting. The mascot of gold version, Ho's name, comes from Ho, an ancient firebird from Chinese mythology. And we made it to the very end of Generation 2 with our final Pokemon, Serebi. This name comes from Sere, spirit, and celebration. It might even come from the words celebrity, celestial, and be, which means beautiful, or even the word baby. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you all for your patience too. I know this one took a little longer than expected, but I hope it was worth the wait. If you liked the video, please consider becoming a follower. Our links will be in the description. See, See you all, all next time! time.